Grow, go, glow. Overcomers Church, changing lives, transforming nations. This morning we are going to look at the message, the work of God. The work of God. If you're writing down, write it down. No notes. Work of God. Work of God. Work of God. What is the work of God? Because you see a lot of works of God and many people name the work of God in different ways. So we have to actually see in the Bible what is the work of God? What is the kingdom of God? Or else we will see think like the latest and the greatest and the biggest and the shandobo, rakama, santobo say it is the work of God. We have to see from the word whether it is so. Are you getting this? Matthew, Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5. Sorry, let's go to Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 13. We'll come to 5. Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 13. There it is, verses number 31 to 33. If you didn't bring your sword, we are having a sword that is accessible for everybody on the screen. The word of God is a weapon. We are not online, right? I mean, in a sense. Otherwise, they'll think that I'm promoting some extremism. We are not talking about that. Uh, word of God is a, a sword against the work of the enemy. Hallelujah. Amen. Matthew chapter number 13, verses number 31 to 33. And everybody read together with me. One, two, three. Another story by way of comparison he set forth before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of... Somebody shout and say, Seed. Which a man took and sowed in his field. Of all the seeds, it is the... Somebody say, Not the latest and the greatest. <laughs> it is the smallest. But when it has grown, it is the of the garden herbs and becomes a so that the birds of the air come and find shelter in its. He told them another parable. Everybody say together one, two, three. The kingdom is like leaven, which a woman took and covered over in three measures of meal or flour, all of it was leaven or yeast. Somebody say yeast. Matthew chapter number 5. Matthew chapter number 5. Verses number. You got it? No? 13. There it is. One, two, three. Everybody read together. You are the? But if salt has lost its taste, its strength, its quality, how can its saltness be restored? It is not good for anything any longer but to be thrown out. The message is the work of God. Message is the work of God. The kingdom of God is like a seed, is like yeast, it is like salt. Sometimes it is highly insignificant, not seen. But when it is properly used, it can have great power great transformation are you getting this now we got to understand that we are all in a journey we are all in a journey we are in different places and faces now king solomon the second wisest man which is because after jesus wrote three books and he wrote the three books in three phases of his life first book that he wrote was song of songs that was in his 20s. And he, that, when you read, um, children, uh, no children, uh, some children are there, so 
We don't encourage them to read it, but you, when you read, you say, ah, full of passion and vigor, he's writing this. So in your 20s, you have this passion and drive. And, ah. But then he wrote Proverbs. He was in his 40s. Then he calms down, tones down. And then he tries to tell some things for his children also. Then later, in his 60s, he writes Ecclesiastes. And then he says, meaningless. Everything is meaningless. 600,000 wives, meaningless. Are you getting this? Huh? Meaningless. All this gold, meaningless. All this vanity, meaningless. Because when you don't have purpose, gotten right, later in your life, you look back and you regret. These are the words of the wisest man. He says that gold was like sand. So common. So he was so rich. So in other words, it means he's rich with money and wealth does not mean ultimate contentment, satisfaction. Because at the end of the road, you will be thinking, what did I do with my life? And many people say this. Later on, 20s, they don't feel. They have passion. They do all kinds of crazy things. Then 40s also, they do some nut cases. <laughs> In my club. Uh, <laughs> then later, they look back and say, shit, what did I do with my life? I've heard people say, I should have done that degree. I should have done that course. I should have done this purpose. But then, they feel, what do they feel? They feel the exact same thing that Solomon felt. Meaningless. Meaningless, meaningless. We can write a song on that. Meaningless. So we can be in different phases of our life but that is why it is so important for you to understand kingdom purpose. When you understand kingdom purpose and the work of God, your life does not become meaningless. It becomes meaningful and ultimately ends up becoming an influence and a legacy. Are you getting this? So when you read these two verses, you see how Jesus sees the kingdom of God. Jesus didn't say the kingdom of God is like a volcano. Some people's Bibles say that. <laughs> Jesus didn't say the kingdom of God is like a mighty edifice. A huge, tall the inspiration of all of Asia. Jesus didn't say that. I'm, I'm saying, Jesus didn't say it. You got to get this. Jesus didn't say it. Jesus says, your, the kingdom of God is like a seed. Somebody say seed. Kingdom of God is like yeast. Somebody say yeast. Kingdom of God is like salt. Somebody say salt. Highly insignificant. Can't see, but very powerful at the right time, in the right way. Ah, you got to understand that God creates purpose in every person. God doesn't separate holy, sacred, and then secular. He considers everybody who believes in Jesus as a son and a daughter. Ah, how many say yes to that? You are a son and a daughter. Not one man or one person. Not only the clergy. But everybody is a priest and a king. Only this side is saying amen. I don't know why. why, why anyway. <laughs> are you getting this? You are a priest and a king. Somebody say yes. Okay. I'm trying to access this note, okay? I'm sorry. So you got to understand, if we are to engage the kingdom work, 
there are three things that you got to have. Number one, commit to the soil you are planted. Commit to the soil you are planted. There are three commitment, commitments you got to make. Number one, commit to the soil you are planted. You got to embrace the place that you are in. Family, work, nation, wherever God has planted you, you got to be committed. But if, uh, you know, now, uh, recently I got a plant. I didn't plant it. Somebody else planted it. They do something called uh, root ball. I don't know what it is, but they said it. I accepted it. And they brought this tree. Supposedly, it has taken about 20 years to grow that tree up to 10 feet. Titta Ambil, endemic plant for Sri Lanka. Twin, four, 10 feet, 20 years. <laughs> then I asked, 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 I liked it so I don't have to do any trimming. Just need to check on that because you know you have to spend time on trimming this thing also. We are trimming the next door neighbor's tree also that is coming got up by his in Australia, wherever I don't know where he is in the world. But I mean the tree is growing and now it is trying to take our roof and now we have to get fellows to cut the roof. I mean, I mean so I, I not to cut the roof, no, sorry. <laughs> the way the way it's going, I might have I once I, I almost cut my roof also. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying, right? You have to understand. You have to understand you are a seed. And when a seed is put to the ground, everything that surrounds it is darkness. Sometimes when God places you somewhere, you might not see nothing. But the seed can't say, because I don't see nothing, better take that thing out of there. <laughs> nothing. I don't see nothing, so I want to get out of here. Get out of here. I don't see nothing. No, if it only stays and commits to its soil, it will see its fruit. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to encourage you today. Commitment to your family is Priority. Commitment if you are married to your marriage is priority. Commitment if you are to this nation is priority. Commitment to whatever profession God has called you is priority. Because you are a seed. Somebody say I'm a seed. I'm a seed. You have to see it like that. There is power in that. And when you see it like that, you will see the fruit of it. Jeremiah, now uh, people like to quote Jeremiah 29, 11. What does it say? Now they are speaking in tongues also. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Huh? Hallelujah. Ah. Praise the Lord. Plans that I have for you. Ah, what? Very evil. Ah. <laughs> to give a hope. And, but many people forget. Why he had to say this? He had to say this to the people because there were false prophets prophesying and telling these guys to move from their land to another land for two years and come back. Read it in Jeremiah 28. So Jeremiah has a true prophet had to stand and say what you're going to do is not the work of God. Then, of course, it's nice to say Jeremiah 29 11. You're getting this? I remember for about 17 minutes here. I'm preaching this message for you to understand. Pastor Woody, Apostle Woody, was a seed. 1991. One man, before Pastor Melody even came, one man, five people. He became a seed in Kote, a seed of the kingdom of God. And today, out of his seed, the work that he started, and then 
mother comes in in 1996 dr melanie block in 2002 all these ministries are birth the bible school and child girls home and ngo and then the youth movement and you see all of these things happen and the nation is touched and nations are touched and today after 33 years the seed ah uh, but when he started he only saw the church that's all sometimes the only thing church with five people it was thick darkness <laughs> that is why in your workplace marriage family whatever it is so important for you to hear the lord like jeremiah and be in the soil tell your neighbor be in the soil a seed that is not in the soil will not bear any fruit right it only seed only seed sometimes it is thrown away also don't be just a seed some people don't commit for anything because they got trust issues i can't trust you i can't trust i can't trust i can't trust let me tell you ladies and gentlemen can i tell you a secret in this world people will break your trust this is a open secret did you hear it <laughs> in this world in this world people will break your trust but we can't stay there we have to trust again believe again are you getting this you are a seed say i am a seed so you got to commit to the soil which means the sphere of influence wherever you are working whatever profession you are in commit to it commit to it commit to it because if you commit to it if you commit to it you will see the fruit if you don't commit you will not see the fruit number 2 you got to commit to process commit to soil commit to the soil commit to the process now the people of uh, israel were promised a promised land in deuteronomy chapter number 1 it says only 11 days mount horeb to uh, the promised land 11 days 11 days it took 40 years 40 years we want instant we want fast even the elevator door i saw that day no patients are getting closed i'm like where no where no where no is going to close yeah. <laughs> like we are living in such a world people are so impatient working in the uh, walking in the airport last week in singapore airport i'm traveling and th- there is this what do you call it i don't know what do you call it the, the thing that is moving and you're walking or you're standing or whatever there are fellows who are running on that also <laughs> i'm like is it fast enough it's going fast in singapore everything is moving fast yeah, people are moving fast everything is moving fast this is also moving fast and this guy these people get in there don't stay they are walking some people not walking they are running so we are living in a world where instant is what we need instant gratification we want it now we want it now but the lord does not work that way the lord works with process and please don't eat processed food also you know that right we are not going to go there that's a different sermon all together but there is process it's a lifelong journey the journey sometimes you know uh, then you see actually in jeremiah uh, earlier when i quoted jeremiah one of the things that is incredible there is what the lord is telling the people of israel is to build your house marry have kids marry the kids off and the lord is telling all of this okay now if you are going to go do that of course your half of your life is anyway gone process generational it takes time even though we want to see sometimes things happen quickly commit to process i think it's about 26 years in galpot first few years sunday morning service one day 150 people coming yes with polu in singala in english ah clubs what ah, anyway sticks you understood no interpretation you got no polu they are coming 
They are coming. No joke. That's how it was. Right here. I'm telling you on this anniversary that this has been a process. You are sitting in a place that there has been process. Not one moment. Not instant gratification. One prayer and the hole is full. Shataka Rafsan. You know, in life, we have seen people pass away. Friends leave. Hopes broken. I have lived through it. We have lived through it. This church has lived through it. And your life, you know what I'm talking about. That's a part of life. That's a journey. But how do we keep with it? Number one is we don't forget where we are planted. We commit to the soil. We commit to the process. We have to commit to the process. And we have a lot of generations that right now, they don't want to commit to process. I was uh, coming through the uh, airport last... Was I preaching last week? No, no. That's what we were preaching. Okay. So, I was coming and then one guy asked me, uh, so what do you do? I said, I teach transformational leadership. So what is that? From Australia, this guy. Coming for Trinity College. Trinity. Praise the Lord. By the way, Vidyartha is playing good rugby. Uh, and rugby season is going to start again next week. And praise God, school rugby. Uh, we will not go there. But I, 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 <laughs> I want you to get this. So uh, he's asking, I'm, I'm doing transformational leadership. So he, what? I said, the problem right now that people are facing is they can't get the Gen Cs to work. There's a high turnover in jobs. We are helping the top level management to understand how they can work together in synchronization. He said, can I have your card? <laughs> can I have your card? He wants me to come and do a training in Australia to help top level management to understand how to get the work done from the next level, how to understand the Gen Cs so that they won't have high turnover in their jobs. Are you getting this? That is actually what I do also. The people are wondering, where is he lying? No, no, I, that's actually what I'm doing. I think a conference also, we learned a lot, but that is actually what I'm doing. I help people understand a generation so that they can work with generational synergy to fulfill a purpose. Now, I do with Christian leaders. I do with some businessmen as well. But when I said it to this guy, he was like, this is the first time I heard something like this. This is great. He was some director of some company in Australia. He's been in Australia for 26 years. But he said, I need this. Process. Process is important. You know why? Because along the process, you will be surprised what God can do. 21 years ago, I walked into Galpotta. 21 years ago. As I came to work for a fashion designer. Then I worked for MTV News as a uh, producer, production assistant, and a reporter. So when I came in here, I didn't know what God has for me. But I responded on the 17th of August, 2003, I responded to the call of God over my life. When I responded to the call of God on my life, I did not know all these things were coming. When you commit to process, you will be shocked by the miracles God can do. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Kingdom of God has process. Somebody say process. And many people hate process. In Sri Lanka to get fellows to do a checklist how hard it is. And some people said amen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hard to get a checklist done. Huh? Uh, hard to get people to just get into some uh, sort of... Uh, Routine, so hard, so hard. So you are getting nuts by trying to get somebody else get out of there. You got it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Corporates are having a real problem. With doing, they don't know how to. But we are trying to give tools that are able, that are able, that 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 make them effective. So we did not think we'll be in this place. I did not think I'll be in this place. But the commitment to process, God can do. And sometimes it takes generations to change a region. All the guys who opposed Overcomers Church, 
none of them are in this lane anymore, but Overcomers Church is here. Yeah. Some guys did witchcraft right at the entrance. Why? Right at the entrance. They are also gone. Their houses are desolate. Their buildings are completely... Now, we didn't pray that. Process. When you stay true to the process, one guy came and told, showed the gun and said, I'll kill you. Pastor Woody. Told Pastor Woody. You know what happened? Only one and a half years after that, or one year, whatever, he was killed by a gunman right at Naval Junction. So the guy who came to assist him, now when Pastor Woody go, he stands, he be my nagit nagin. Nagit tena. This is real stories, ladies and gentlemen. These are the things that have happened. One day we were praying here. Next door, guys got upset about it, that we were praying. They came out and they were saying all kinds of things about our mothers and fathers. <laughs> yes, my wife told not to use other words, so I have, I have sub mutually submitted to... Uh, oh, you understand? No? So, uh, <laughs> yeah, they are reminding us. Uh, uh, Lineage and they are telling all these things, you know, speaking in Sinhalese that we don't understand. It's called Suddha Singhala. So we come out of prayer, praise God and anointing. And then there is another anointing operating here. And without church, they are shouting these things, you know. Yes. Stretch the hand, start praying in tongues. Kor Rabba Santar ran to the house. They thought we did some spell or something. <laughs> Without the shirt. Looking from the curtain. Ah, then they played something really loud. Also. They are also playing something really loud. And then they are watching what we are doing. We were, I was surrounded. Myself and another guy was surrounded. They put uh, these flags for another ceremony. Along the road. Somebody has cut a part of the flag and gone. Now, who was the culprit? Myself and another guy. Now about 20 guys from Walawat came, surrounded, they are trying to beat us up. The pastor Woody came, pastor, I think, Ma, Jeremy was there and they started praying in tongues. Minna maturna, minna maturna, minna maturna. Ladies and gentlemen, this is process. I am telling you, life and death, no joke. 33 years is not a nice story. What we are trying to tell you is what God builds will have opposition, will have up and down. Yeah. But you got to commit to the soil, commit to the process. You will have the miracle. You will have the miracle. Time is going. Dale. Finally. You like my stories, right? Praise God. Finally. Commit to the long run. Don't commit to short-term stuff. Commit to the long run. We are not doing a short dash here. We are doing a marathon. And this marathon is not only just us. The marathon is also a relay. It's a different thing. A relay marathon. Have you ever seen it? You will never see it. Only in the kingdom of God. A relay marathon. Because one generation has to pass the baton to the next. Yes. Yes. And not only that, sometimes all generations are running all together. <laughs> this is not normal rules. This is kingdom rules. Hallelujah. Are you getting this? You got to commit to the long run. The secret of success, somebody said, is the commitment of purpose. You can have ups and downs, but you have to go in the same direction. Whether it be family, whether it be business, whether it be church, whatever. You can have ups and downs, but you have to go in the same direction. You can't go through opposite directions. I have one of my mentors. Uh, his name is Billy Kennedy, Apostle Billy Kennedy from uh, Southampton. Pastor Julian and SD has been there, I believe. <laughs> So, he was talking to me. They run two schools. One school has 2,500. The other school has 1,600 kids. Both schools were going to go. Uh, both schools were going to shut down. 
but they said to the government we will fund it and we will run it so he tells me we took over these two schools and guess what and we signed for 125 years i said 125 years of course we know 99 years 125 years i said 125 i said billy you won't be here he said that is the exact point i got to leave something even when i am not there that will be able to create legacy <laughs> ladies and gentlemen the faith that you have the business that you build and the things that you do is not only for you you got to always build something that is generational mother is not here even though she's gone some of the kids that are getting the care that they need i mean the last five or six girls that are came sexually abused molest i mean just crazy stuff in the girls home that but all those girls the the girls that came after about about another 10 girls are there they never even knew mother pastor melanie but today they are able to live in that comfort and find destiny and repaint their future because of this woman her vision are you getting this Ah, praise the Lord. Yes, we are getting there. Oh, they are making noises. Sometimes we start with noise and all of that. And uh, anyway, <laughs> there was a doctor named Charles West. You can Google him. Uh, Charles West. He lived in London, and he loved um, taking care of kids and giving medical attention. So he was a Christian man, and God led him. He didn't know how to start an hospital, but he started. with 10 beds in his own house a hospital 10 beds now today after 170 years ladies and gentlemen it has 750 beds the great armor street hospital in london one man and it has become one of the top pediatric hospitals in the entire world there was also a doctor name dr green who came from new york he came to jaffna he first came to batiklo and then he moved from batiklo to jaffna under the british 150 years ago i don't know whether you know it but i if you know it i'll still tell you he is the first guy to start a hospital and a school in sri lanka he translated over 4000 documents of medical documents into the language of tamil one man one commitment to the soil to the process to the long run Jesus lived only 33 years one man he gave his entire life for the people that he did not even see at that moment after 2000 years his legacy lives because his life was not about himself but about others if you live your life for your sake you will be forgotten but if you live your life for purpose and others you will be remembered in history and eternity let us stand as we pray god's work some of you have a burden some of you have something this this morning as i was coming i was talking with rema and rema said you know she is impressed by the samaritan spurs billy graham son who runs a ngo and she said that's one of my dreams is to do 
something like that from Sri Lanka to the nations. Not Sri Lanka, but to the nations. We were discussing this morning. And we have to train ourselves and generations to come not to only focus on yourself. But focus on others and eternity will reward you. History will remember you. As we close our eyes this morning, raise our hands to the Lord and say, you know, I commit to God's work. Lord, I want to be planted, not to be uprooted. I want to be fully committed to what God has given me. Ah, if God has given you something to do, I am fully committed to be a mother, to be an intercessor, to be a businessman, to be a scientist, to be a researcher, to be an entrepreneur, whatever it is. I am fully committed, Lord. Say that to yourself. Say that to the Lord. I am fully committed. Today I am fully committed. Not half. I am fully committed. Put your heart into that. And say I am fully committed to the work of the Lord. And Father, I pray that they will be committed to the process. No matter what hardships have come. Yes, some of you have faced some hardships. But commit to the process. Because the process will have a reward. And Father, this morning I also pray that they will not look for themselves for now only, but they will look at generations. They will look at generations. They will look at how to impact generations. They will look at how to make an impact on generations in the name of Jesus. So I declare and decree. Thank you for this church, Lord. Thank you for Pastor Woody who said yes. Thank you for Mama Mel who said yes. Lord, I say in this room, along the way, all the pastors, all the leaders who have said yes along the way, I declare and decree in the name of Jesus that there will be a multiplication. And I see many more hearts in this room also will say yes. Yes for what is eternal. Yes for what is God's. Yes for His purpose. So that your kingdom may increase and your will may be done. Bless each person, Lord. Stir them in a new way inside of them. Let purpose rise inside of them and let them serve the kingdom of God so that even the insignificant things in their life will make a huge difference in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen, Amen. amen. Grow, go, glow. Overcomers Church. Changing lives, transforming nations.